Ever heard of a prince becoming a farmer? How about the British royal who makes furniture, or the helicopter flying duchess? It may sound ludicrous, but these royals really do work fairly regular jobs. Keep watching for more. There is a reason you don't often see Princess Beatrice on official outings like her fellow British royals, because she doesn't have to. Beatrice isn't a working royal, and therefore isn't paid by the sovereign grant that funds the members of the royal family who work for the queen full-time. Instead, after Princess Beatrice completed her degree in history at Goldsmiths University in London, she entered the workforce and got a regular job. Beatrice worked as an analyst for Sony Pictures Entertainment Incorporated until 2015, and in 2016, she became the vice president of partnerships and strategy at software company Affinity. According to the company's site, Beatrice is responsible for the management of the company's partnerships, as well as company growth and development. Princess Eugenie has followed in her older sister's footsteps, eschewing her royal duties for a slightly more common line of work. Eugenie earned a degree from Newcastle University in English Literature, Art History, and Politics back in 2012. After her studies, Eugenie moved to New York in 2013 to get a regular job, and she soon began working for auction house Paddle 8. After a couple of years in the United States, Princess Eugenie moved back to London to work for the art gallery Hauser & Wirth. Princess Eugenie's responsibilities have included planning special projects, supporting artists in the gallery, and managing events. In an interview with Harper's Bazaar, Eugenie explained how she's always loved art. She said, I knew I definitely wouldn't be a painter, but I knew this was the industry for me. I love being able to share my passion for art with people. If someone doesn't understand something, you have the ability to suggest, maybe you can look at it this way. That's what I find most thrilling about working in a gallery. Peter Phillips is a name that's probably unfamiliar to those without an intimate knowledge of the inner workings of the British royal family. When he was born, his mother, Princess Anne, rejected the offer of a royal title for her children from the Queen, likely in an effort to give them a normal childhood. What do you call her? What do you call your granny? Um, I've got, uh, yeah, grandma and granny, yeah, my mum's a granny, yeah. There you go. While Phillips has undoubtedly gone on to lead a relatively quiet life compared to the more high-profile members of his family, it's hard to say whether his lack of a title helped in that regard. After earning a degree in sports science from the University of Exeter in 2000, he went on to get a regular job, or rather, a series of regular jobs. During this time, he held positions at Jaguar, Williams Racing, and the Royal Bank of Scotland. In 2012, Phillips became the managing director at sports and entertainment company SEL UK Limited. According to the company's website, Phillips is responsible for increasing the commercial value for both sports and entertainment rights holders in the UK, whilst delivering world-class events to London. Princess Michael of Kent is married to the Queen's first cousin, Prince Michael. As members of the extended royal family, the couple does not perform official royal duties or receive public funding. However, Princess Michael and her husband support the Queen at some events and act as patrons of several charitable organizations. While Princess Michael does have a more regular job than working royals, her job is unique compared to other non-working royals' positions. The princess has released multiple books over the years, including works of historical nonfiction and the Anjou Trilogy, a fictional series. In addition to her books, Princess Michael has had an extensive career as a lecturer. Before she became a royal and accomplished author, though, Princess Michael was an interior designer, and she even ran her own interior design company. Zara Tyndall, Prince Anne's daughter, followed in her mother's footsteps and became an accomplished equestrian, even winning a silver medal at the 2012 Olympics in London. Was it very important that you beat your mother's record? <laughs> mm, no, it was very important I beat my father's. <laughs> Though her racing days aren't yet behind her, Tyndall began a new role in 2019 that is well-suited to someone who has dedicated so much of their life to equestrianism. She became a director at the Cheltenham Racecourse. 
Of her new regular job, Tyndall said, I'm passionate about horse racing, particularly on the jump side, and the absolute pinnacle of that is Cheltenham. Racing is simply the most exciting sport and it's open to all. It's an honor to have been asked by Martin St. Quentin on behalf of the Jockey Club to get involved in a more formal capacity, and I look forward to doing my bit to support the executive team in the years to come. The members of Greece's royal family don't receive quite as much media attention as their British counterparts, which has likely aided in Princess Marie Chantal's quiet success. Before the princess was set up on a date with the Crown Prince of Greece, she was a high school student who was passionate about art and about to embark on an internship with Andy Warhol. However, Marie Chantal's royal courtship didn't mean an end to her studies. In fact, it was just the opposite. Marie Chantal later told Vanity Fair, When I was pregnant, I started to get itchy feet again, and I was desperate to do something on my own merit. That itchy feeling led her to launch her own line of children's clothing. Nowadays, the company ships to over 45 countries, with Marie Chantal serving as both the CEO and the creative director. Of the company, Marie Chantal told Vanity Fair, The business is what makes me me. That's why I call it Marie Chantal, with no princess or anything. It gives me my independence, it gives me incredible pleasure and focus, and it belongs to me 100%. David Lindley, the son of Princess Margaret and photographer Anthony Armstrong Jones, has lived a much quieter life than his famous parents. His name hardly makes headlines the way the working royals do, allowing Lindley to focus on his passion he's had since he was a child — furniture making. As a child, Lindley loved to be in his father's rooms. Lindley recalled to Vanity Fair that he loved the avant-garde furniture his father made, and how that love of furniture ultimately led him to his professional endeavor, opening an eponymous furniture company. While in the past Lindley made many of his pieces himself, he was honest about his current role to Vanity Fair, saying, I'm sort of the enabler. I look at a space and I'll put furniture ideas in it, but I very much try to encourage the next generation of designers to come through. That I like doing. That's exciting." Prior to joining the royal family, Meghan Markle was a working actor with a decent number of roles under her belt. Markle made her on-screen debut in the 90s, but her work ethic was established much earlier. As an ambitious young teenager, she earned minor ducats at a local frozen yogurt shop. What's the first role you ever auditioned for? Hot girl number one in A Lot Like Love with Ashton Kutcher. Markle's adult years were filled with bit parts, though her biggest role to date was in Suits. Upon becoming a duchess, Markle left the show, explaining during a joint interview with Harry that she wanted to focus on making a difference instead. However, when she and Harry stepped down from the royal family, there was speculation Markle might return to Hollywood. In 2020, the former actor lent her voice to Elephant, a Disney Plus documentary. The duchess actually signed a voiceover deal with the conglomerate to benefit conservation organization Elephants Without Borders. It may not have the glamour of suits, but it's still a long way from the yogurt shop. Prince Joachim of Denmark is not likely to sit on the Danish throne. However, he sometimes acts as regent when his mother, the queen, and his older brother, the heir apparent, are abroad. Because he is further down the line of succession and doesn't have the weight of the monarchy resting on his shoulders, he's had ample time to pursue his own interests. Before taking a role in the military, Prince Joachim worked on a farm and studied agrarian economics. Then the prince went on to embark on a long military career that eventually led to him becoming a lieutenant colonel in 2011. Despite his extensive military background, Prince Joachim's interest in farming never went away. In fact, Prince Joachim owns and runs a number of farming and forestry operations, which primarily center on industrial agriculture. In September 2021, the prince started work at the Danish embassy to France as a defense attaché. In an Instagram post, he shared, I feel ready for the post. After finishing a demanding year of study at the Centre des Hortes Etudes Militaires in June, a lot of exciting tasks lie ahead for the armed forces and for Denmark. Sarah Ferguson isn't technically a royal anymore, as she split from Prince Andrew all the way back in 1992. The former couple still lives together, however, and the Duchess of York frequently attends events alongside other members of the monarchy. Unlike many other British royals, though, Ferguson still works. 
the Duchess grafted for much of her life. More recently, she told Swedish TV show Skavlan all about being a teenage cleaner and working as a waitress over the years. Ferguson quipped, Then I married a prince. It was great. These days, despite no longer being an official royal, Ferguson has a somewhat more glamorous life. She has several businesses, and she is also a successful author, penning children's books as well as several autobiographies. Really, I feel uh, very proud at 61 to start a new career. Likewise, the Duchess notably has many charitable initiatives, partnering her foundation with Street Child in 2018. Daughters Beatrice and Eugenie, meanwhile, are ambassadors for the charity. Ferguson also reportedly holds a helicopter license, just in case she ever needs another side hustle. With the COVID-19 pandemic raging, Princess Sophia of Sweden attempted to prove she was a woman of the people by rolling up her sleeves and getting to work. Sophia completed an intensive online training course so she could help out at Sophia Hemet Hospital, where she was already honorary chair. She reportedly posed for photos wearing scrubs and sneakers, with her hair pulled back from her face and the requisite ID tag proudly displayed. Although Sophia couldn't perform any medical procedures, she was expected to pitch in with hospital staff wherever she was needed. The hospital, much like many medical institutions all over the world, was overwhelmed with patients thanks to the deadly virus. They launched an emergency training program and a desperate bid for help, and Sophia, surprisingly, answered the call, inspiring dozens of other citizens to do so. She may be glamorous, but Sophia has long been considered the toughest member of the Swedish royal family, even completing a tough Viking challenge that has been compared to America's Tough Mudder event. Evidently, she's not afraid of getting her hands dirty. Being a model isn't exactly a regular job, but it appears to be considerably more work than simply being a full-time royal. Prince Nikolai of Denmark is an in-demand model who has his parents' full backing to work however he pleases. In fact, his dad, Prince Joachim, told a Danish news site, Nikolai's future shall be conducted entirely by his own plan. He reportedly signed to local agency Scoop Models in 2018, and he has already graced the runways of both London and Paris's fashion weeks. Nikolai also walked into Dior's pre-fall 2019 show in Tokyo, after notably opening Kim Jones' debut menswear showcase for the iconic brand shortly beforehand. Although Nikolai doesn't stand to inherit any money from his parents, they will cover his educational costs. In 2019, it was reported that the prince intended to pursue a degree at Copenhagen Business School, at one point telling the Danish press, I do not want a career as a model. I'd rather look at it as a job, which can help me along the way while educating me. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.